I'm planning to create a playlist where I'll be going through each of the web vulnerabilities one by one. By the end of the playlist, you will have a very good understanding of how web application penetration testing works. So let's get started. The first challenge that we are going to be solving is the brute force challenge. And if I click on DVWS security, I have the level of difficulty, low means easy. So I'll be solving this one first. So I will select low and click on submit. And now if I come back to brute force, I can see I get a web login page where I have to find the username and the password. Now before I carry on with the challenge, if you do not have DVWA already installed in your Kali Linux and Foxy Proxy not configured with your Firefox, I will link two videos in the description box. Please check those videos out, set up your system and now you can follow along. Now if you have already set up your system, you already know that the username is admin and the password is password. If I click on login. I can see the username and the password is correct but we will act like we do not know the username and the password and try to brute force it so if i give a wrong username and a wrong password i will give the password as abc and click on login i can see that i get the error message saying that my username and password is incorrect now let's see how we can brute force this login page the first thing i will do is in the upper left corner i will click on the kali button and type perp suite click on ok keep temporary project in memory selected and click on next click Use burp default selected and click on start burp. When burp switch starts, click on proxy. Under intercept, click on this button to turn the intercept on. Next, I will minimize burp suite and in my extension, I will turn the foxy proxy on. And now in the username and the password field, I will type any random username and any random password. We are just trying to intercept this request and click on login. I will refresh the page and I can see that my request got intercepted. And as you can see, I have made the request with the username ABC and the password also ABC. Now I will send this request to the intruder. To do that, I will right click and click on send to intruder. On the upper tab, click on intruder. And this is the request that we just sent to intruder. In this request, we have to select our payload positions by adding a marker. So first click on this icon, which is to clear the marker if any marker existed. And now we have to add the marker. We have to add the marker in two positions, one in the username field and one in the password field. So I will click on the ABC of the username field twice and it is selected. Now I will click on add marker and as you can see, the marker has been added in the username field. I will do the same for the password field too. So I will click twice on the ABC of the password and add the marker. Now for the attack type, I will change from sniper to cluster bomb. Cluster bomb is when all the user tries the combination of all the passwords. You will understand better when the attack starts. For now, keep cluster bomb selected and then click on the upper tab, which is the payloads option. Under payload sets, you will see payload set. You can select one or two. Here, one means the username field and two means the password field. So I will provide a list of username for the username field first. So for the payload type, I will change the simple list to runtime file. I want to provide my own list of users. So click on select file. I'm in my user directory right now. I will first go to the shared directory. Then I will type in my keyboard word list. Then I will go to the word list directory. Next, I will go to the metasploit directory. I will choose the file HTTP default users.txt. This file contains the most common HTTP usernames and then click on open. Now that we have provided our list of usernames, we will now provide our list of password. So in the payload set, I will select the password field, which is two. For the payload type, I will again select the runtime file. For the payload settings, I will click on select file. And this time I will select the file HTTP default pass.txt. This contains the most common HTTP default passwords and then click on open to select the file. Now we are all done. I will click on start attack. And as you can see, my attack has started. Since I'm doing a cluster bomb attack, the username admin is first trying the password admin and then again you will see that the admin is trying the password password and so on. Here you can see the admin is trying the password let me in and the other usernames are also trying the combination of all the password. So this is what I meant when every username will try the combination of all the passwords. Here response received means in how many milliseconds are we getting the response. The field that we should be interested in looking is the length field. Length means content length. Content length means the size of the page. So I can see that if the password or the username is incorrect, all the size of the page are same, 
which is the error message that you saw earlier the username and the password is incorrect that error message the content length is more or less the same 4702 or 4703 so if the content length is different then it means that we should be interested in that password and username so to filter i will click on the length once and i will click on the length again and i can see out of all the content length when the username is admin and the password is password the content length is the highest which is 4740 so there is a strong possibility that this is our username and password so i will close everything i will turn the intercept off and if i try the username admin and the password password i can see our brute force attack is successful so this is the easy challenge of brute force now we will be doing the medium challenge of brute force so i will first click on dbws security select medium click on submit and click on brute force again so what is the difference between the medium and the easy challenge so if i scroll down and click on view source and check the source code out i can see in the if else statement if the login fails it will sleep for two seconds which means that before trying another attempt we have to wait for two seconds so this is the only difference between the medium and the easy challenge i will do it either way so that you can understand better so i will turn on my foxy proxy turn my intercept on and give any random username and a random password click on login to intercept the request i have given the username abc and the password abc again i will right click and send to intruder i will click on intruder the process is similar to the easy challenge but there is this only one difference so please keep on following along and you'll understand so as we did in the easy challenge i will first clear the target and then in the username field i will add a marker in the password name field too i will add a marker the attack type i'll change from sniper to cluster bomb and then i will click on payloads the payload set is one for the username the payload type is the runtime file i'll select i will select the file as same as before which is the http default users.txt click on open and payload set then i will change to two for the password field the payload type i'll change from simple list to runtime file select the file http default pass.txt and then click on open and now we can start the attack and when the attack starts you can see under the response received field we are getting a response in every 2000 millisecond which is two second so the only difference between the easy and the medium challenge is this medium challenge is much slower i have to wait two seconds before every attempt so i will let it run so after my brute force attack ran for a while i can see under the content length the content length is more or less similar which is 4712 or 4711 so if i filter by the highest content length I can see when the username is admin and the password is password, the content length is the highest which is 4750 and since it is not a failed login attempt, the response time received is also 3 millisecond. So this is our username and password. So this is the medium challenge of brute force. Now we will be doing the hard challenge. So first I will click on DVWS security, select high and click on submit. So what is the brute force hard challenge? So if I scroll down and click on the view source, I can see in the if else statement before checking the username and the password the web server will first check whether the anti-csrf token is correct or not so what is an anti-csrf token i will not go into details of csrf because we have a whole section dedicated to it for now just think of anti-csrf token as a uniquely alphanumerical user token and it is different every time you send a request to the server so even if your username and password matches but the user token does not match it will not let you log in and if the login fails it will randomly sleep between 0 to 3 seconds. So in order to brute force this web server, the first thing we have to do is grab the user token and send it with each request of the username and the password. I will show you in details, I'll close this. So as you can see, there's a username field and a password field. And here, there is a user token which is hidden. So if I right click and click on inspect, under the submit button, you can see there is a hidden field. If I double click on hidden and convert it into text, I can see this is my user token. So if I refresh the page and again change the hidden to text, I can see our user token is different. So now first I will try to grab this user token and send it with every request of the username and the password. So let's do it. I will close this. I will refresh my page once. I will turn the foxy proxy on. Next, I will start my burp suite, turn the intercept on and just reload the page to intercept the request. After the request is intercepted, I will click on proxy settings here. And in the left tab, I will click on sessions here we have to add our own session handling rules. So I'll click on add. The rule description, you can call it anything you want. I will just name it as rule one. And for the rule action, I will click on add and select run a macro. And then we have to select our macro. So I'll click on add. 
and select the request that we made earlier. So you know, this is the request that we just made. At this point, we can turn the intercept off if we want. So I'll click on it to turn the intercept off. And after selecting the request, I'll click on OK. And in the macro editor, I'll click on configure item. And in the custom parameter location, I will click on add. And now we have to add our user token as the parameter. So in the search field, search for token. And this is our user token. So copy the name here, user token, and paste it in the parameter name. Now select the value, double click on the value, and it will automatically get selected. And click on OK. Click on OK again. Click on OK. And in the session handling action editor, check mark this box which will tolerate URL mismatch and then click on OK. And in the session handling rule editor, take on scope. Under tool scope, uncheck everything except intruder. And under URL scope, select use switch scope and then click on OK. So the reason why we added this session handling rules is because we want to grab the user token first. And every time we are making a new request with a new username and a new password, we are going to use the token we just grabbed. So after the setting has been done, now we can start brute force, close the settings tab, turn the intercept on and give any random username and a random password to intercept the request. Click on login. And as you can see, we grab the request. I can see my username is ABC, my password is ABC and this session token is generated. Next, I will click on HTTP history and in the parameter, I can see a check mark. So this is my request. So I will right click on it and click on send to intruder. I will again right click on it and click on add to scope. I will click no here. Then I will go to my intruder tab. I will first clear any marker. Then I will add the marker in the username field. Next, I will add the marker in the password field. Select the attack type as cluster bomb. Click on payloads. Select one for payload set for the username. For the payload type, select runtime file. And I will choose the HTTP default users.txt. Next, for the password, I will again choose runtime file and select the file HTTP default pass.txt and click on open. Next, at the settings tab here, I will uncheck this box, make unmodified baseline request. And in the grip match, I will clear everything and add my own match, which would be incorrect. And click on add. Now we are all done. We can start the attack. So I'll click on start attack. And after my attack has run for a while, I can see in the incorrect field, if the username or the password is incorrect, it will show one. But if it is correct, it will show nothing. And as you can see, when the username is admin and the password is password, it shows nothing. I can also filter on the content length. So the highest content length would be my username and password. So as you can see, the content length of every username and password is 4719. But when the username is admin and the password is password, the content length is 4829. So this is how you solve the hard challenge of brute force. Next, we will be solving the comment injection. If you like this video and want to watch more content related to the other web vulnerabilities, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.